Hi everyone, my name is Tara Moore and I am the Director of Conservation Partnerships from the North Carolina Wildlife Federation. I am joined by Dr. Liz Rutledge, the Director of Wildlife Resources from the North Carolina Wildlife Federation. Um, the North Carolina Wildlife Federation has been around since 1945 and our mission is to protect, conserve, and restore North Carolina wildlife and habitat. And we do that by conserving all species from monarch butterflies up to bear and elk and deer, which we are here to talk about today. So thank you for joining us, Liz. Um, I wanted to start off by um, asking um, if you could tell everyone a bit about deer in North Carolina. Yeah, first of all, thanks for having me today, Tara. And um, deer are an important sustainable natural resource, and there are approximately 1 million deer in the state. This species, like all wildlife, it's a public trust resource, meaning wild deer roam freely and essentially belong to everyone. Therefore, anyone who's interested can take a hunter education course, purchase a license, and hunt this species within the statewide regulated hunting season. Um, a lot of people who take part in deer hunting, they do it as a recreational activity and a way to connect with nature, while others use it as their primary way of obtaining protein for the year. And hunter harvest is extremely important to the proper management of this species. Reporting harvested deer to the North Carolina Wildlife Resources Commission, as well as any deer that appear sick or behaving abnormally, this helps biologists evaluate their numbers and inform management decisions. So the ethical harvest of deer can be beneficial to deer as well as to local communities. Great, thanks Liz. And you mentioned deer are a sustainable resource that can benefit from proper management. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, definitely. So deer are a natural resource and their populations are sustainable with proper management, meaning that healthy populations reproduce annually and will continue to thrive year after year as long as wildlife managers, including hunters, take part in proper management of the resource. Um, like all wildlife, deer require resources for survival, including food. And when there are too many deer for an area to support in terms of available quality habitat, this competition for resources can affect the overall health of the herd. Additionally, when there are high numbers of deer in localized areas, the potential for deer to interact and congregate increases, potentially increasing the risk for transmission of disease between individuals. Speaking of deer congregating, I've heard farmers talk about deer feeding on crops. Is this an issue in North Carolina? So North Carolina has a lot of agriculture across the state, essentially providing a buffet of crops for deer to feed on. So the deer are just doing what's natural and efficient for them, which is obtaining large amounts of food from a small area, essentially can mean crop fields. So deer actually browse, which means they effectively remove crops or other vegetation within their reach. Uh, and this can potentially leave North Carolina farmers with millions of dollars in crop damage across the entire state. Um, and this is a complex issue, but there are ways that deer can be managed to reduce crop damage on and around farms. Interesting, how so Liz? Where local deer numbers are high, particularly in agricultural communities, deer can be harvested annually within the regulated hunting season, effectively reducing local population. Um, many hunters are out looking for large antler deer, but removing doe from the population is actually more effective at reducing deer numbers. And this is because removing doe early in the fall season prior to mating will reduce the number of fawns that will be born in the spring. And it's also important to note that deer browse can ne negatively impact other wildlife species as well by removing vegetation that's used for foraging or cover. So what can the hunters do with deer if they've already harvested what they want to keep for the season or are managing deer on a specific site during the fall? That's a great question. One benefit to harvesting deer during the fall season is that the meat can be utilized to help local people in need. For example, if a property is being managed through hunting, or if a hunter has already harvested all that they'll be able to consume for the year, the deer can be donated free of charge at qualified meat processors across the state. The deer are then processed in the ground venison and distributed to local food relief organizations feeding thousands of people per year. And uh, venison is a healthy source of protein that's also low in fat. 
That sounds great. So how can people get involved if they're interested? Yeah, so there are a few ways that people can get involved. We're always looking for hunters to donate deer at meat processors on the North Carolina Hunters for the Hungry Network, which these are all inspected meat processors and they're inspected by the North Carolina Department of Agriculture. Um, and one cool thing about this collaboration with North Carolina Hunters for the Hungry, which is another nonprofit, is the deer are harvested, processed, and then the ground venison is all distributed locally. So this allows people to support this program in their local communities. And hunters and hunt clubs can also hold deer donation events to help the cause as well. We want everyone involved, so we provide an opportunity for non-hunters and civic groups to collect and donate non-perishable recipe items for the food relief organizations who are distributing venison. These items, along with a recipe for venison chili or spaghetti, are distributed to the recipients to provide all the necessary ingredients to prepare a delicious, healthy meal. Um, another way people can help and support organizations like the Wildlife Federation are always looking for um, people who support their mission. And if you support harvesting, donating deer to feed those in need and to manage healthy deer populations, um, you can contribute financially to the program. It's a great way to provide support. That's amazing. Are there any other benefits of deer management that you'd like to mention before we close out today? Um, I would just say one more real quickly. Uh, proper deer harvest and management can also potentially reduce the risk for deer vehicle collisions. Um, while this can occur anywhere, urban and suburban areas can definitely benefit from management efforts. Um, folks can also slow down when you're driving and just be aware of wildlife on roadways in general. And I guess in closing, I would just like to say thanks to everyone who supports wildlife and conservation through the North Carolina Wildlife Federation's Deer Management and Donation Program. We really appreciate your support. Thanks for being here, Liz, as our resident deer expert. Thanks very much. Thank you.